Well, we have a very, very special treat for all of you tonight. He died in 1990, the one of a kind, always well behaved, B.F. Skinner. Welcome, B.F. Um, <laughs> actually, you prefer to be called Mr. Skinner. <laughs> Alright, welcome, Mr. Skinner. And that's more like it. Oh, what's this for? Uh, just eat it. Alright. Okay, uh, well, thank you for having me on your show today, Gary. Uh, I hope to be as insightful as I can while George Romero allows me to stay awake. So, is there anything you'd like to ask me? This is delicious, BF. I mean, Mr. Skinner. Obviously, it's not delicious enough. Um, you see, sometimes when the reinforcer doesn't quite get its job done, there has to be an adversive thrown into the mixture. Whoa, to whoa, be... whoa, Mr. Skinner. Hold on just a minute. I'm not quite sure I understand. How could I be so naive? I'm sorry. Um, the methods of which I speak are part of the psychological perspective of behaviorism, a perspective that I contributed to quite heavily while I was on Earth the first time. Behaviorism, yes, of course. That's like believing rewarding an action, positively or negatively, will induce a conditioned response. Correct you, are Gary. Excellent, but before we get to any of that, how about you tell us a little bit about your personal life? Okie dokie, well, I was born in Pennsylvania in 04. That's 1904. Um, when I was 16, my brother died of a cerebral aneurysm, which I didn't take very well. It was probably the most shocking experience of my life so far, but I guess it's a big event, and uh, who could blame me for taking it so bad? Am I right, Gary? Of course, Mr. Skinner. Okay, so after that, I went on to Hamilton College in New York, and after that, I got my PhD in psychology from Harvard. Ooh, prestigious. Yeah, it was a great school. I even ended up teaching there uh, after after a while. And I, I also taught at the University of Minnesota and at the University of Indiana as well. But uh, besides from that, I did some boring, unimportant stuff with behaviorism that nobody really cares about. And, uh, well, now that I've been reanimated with the help of a syringe filled with green goo, I have many more ambitions that I think will serve the greater good of the people much much more significantly. Um, one of those ambitions is the fact that I want to become the first cannibal laureate of the uh, uh, literature in the USA. Well, today we are less interested in your zombie fantasies and more interested in that behaviorism that you touched on earlier. Maybe you could explain yourself a little bit more? I don't want to. Here, put this on. Okay. Kind of uncomfortable. That's all right. Hmm. So, is there any? Let's talk about behaviorism. No. Ah! Ouch! That really hurt. And I want to talk about behaviorism. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Looks like you've already got it down pretty well, anyway. What do you mean, Mr. Skinner? Well, you see the shot color that you put on me to try to elicit a certain response? Yeah. Well, that's pretty much operating conditioning, which is my most important psychological theory involving behaviorism. I don't quite understand, Mr. Skinner. <sighs> okay, this is it. Okay? You've got this funky little thing called a behavior. And you've got this funky little dude that wants to modify it, change it up a little, you know, give it a shake. So that's where this reinforcement comes in to try and create a predictable behavior. For example, I have here this puppy. I don't like when this puppy uses the inside of my house as a bathroom. So, when he does, I practice the very effective technique of dissing my dog. Then, after he is nice and dissed, he poops outside in order to avoid the embarrassing sarcastic ridicule. Do you follow? Do I ever, Mr. Skinner? Thank you, Mr. Skinner. Uh, why don't I get my candy? Didn't I tell you? You're on a reinforcement schedule. No? Okay, reinforcement schedule is where you can say, Mr. Skinner, 
as many times as you want. But you only get one piece of candy per minute in order to, one, conserve candy, and two, uh, keep, you, keep you honest, not, not to make you greedy. But the show's over. I don't have any more time. Please, Mr. Skinner, can I have just one more? No! You're being rude now. I have to go satisfy my unnerving hunger for human flesh anyway. Fine. Whatever. Thanks for being on the show, I guess.